It is time for Around the 412 with Smitty and Tyler. Welcome back to another episode of Around the 412. I am Tyler. With me, as always, is my co-host, Smitty. Go follow us on all of our social medias at Around the 412. Go check us out on YouTube if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. Drop some comments if you want and ask some questions. We'll answer them on the show for you. And whether you're over on YouTube or if you're listening on the platforms like Apple or Spotify or wherever you find your podcast, we have a link that we want to start talking about in the beginning of the show. We did it all last year. We've done it for several years now, but we haven't done it in the beginning of the show this year, and it's been nearly a month since we launched launched it. It's year seven of rocking around the 412. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's our Christmas fundraiser where Smitty and I and all of you good people help raise money to provide Christmas for children in the 724-412 local Pittsburgh metro area codes. Um, and over the first six years, we've been able, been able to raise over $32,000 to provide ch- uh, Christmas for dozens of kids. I mean, we're probably, when you mix in like how many kids we've done, individual families with that Aliquippa Center the first year and all of the Salvation Army stuff, we're probably over 100 kids or at least getting close to that number. And when you look at last year alone, we raised over $6,600. So we want to continue to push that. We raised over $600 so far this year in just the first month, which is great. We run this thing all the way through Christmas. So if you're interested in that and you want to check that out, we have it in our description of the show over on YouTube and on all the listening platforms where you find the show. It's going to be the top link every single time from now until Christmas. And go check it out. It's called Rocking Around the 412. This is year seven of it. It's our baby. It's our fundraiser. And we love doing it. And we thank every single one of you who has been involved, shared shared it, donated. It's It seriously means the world to us. Um, this is the Pirates show. And the Pirates did pretty good. We talked about our expectations of, of the first two series that we're going to be talking mm-hmm. about with the Phillies and the Cardinals. And we basically said like they have to win both series to – be serious about being interested in the trade deadline and staying in buyers. Like we talked about what the possibility is very realistic that they could have gone one and five in this series, but they end up going four and two. They're still above 500. They're in a really good spot. And when it comes to the wild card and the division, what what did you think of about the pirates performance the last two series? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> hard to be upset whatsoever with that series against Philly, even with them dropping that, dropping a goose egg in the finale on Sunday, losing that yeah. one to five, nothing. Um, so, you know, no complaints there. Another gem from Luis Ortiz, by the way, over the weekend. I think that's really obviously, you know, what Steens has done. We're going to talk about him. We talk about him every episode. We could go on and on about Mitch Keller too, the length that he provides this rotation, but has anybody just from it in terms of like expectation to what they provided been more, I mean, I guess Nick Gonzalez maybe because of the way that he bounced back from last year, mm-hmm. but, just has anybody been more valuable in terms of that what we expect them to do and then what they're actually doing to then Luis Ortiz I mean going from what he was two years ago where he looked really promising you know ended up not really being part of the rotation didn't expect him to be part of the rotation this year was awesome in his long relief role a couple guys are down with injuries and he just continues to pitch awesome but has now done it for longer periods of time so uh yeah he's been awesome to watch go had that gem on Saturday over the weekend to secure the series win against Philly before we even get to Sunday. Uh, And then again, you know, they, they they throw a goose egg up on Sunday. Um, Mm -hmm. The series with the Cardinals, you know, again, like you you win a series, you got to feel pretty good about it, but man, does it feel like they should have swept that series? I mean, you have that gem from Paul Steens in the middle game of the series, the one that they dropped. They only score one run and it took them eight innings to even scratch that one across. Steens comes back out for the ninth, uh, a double, which you know was called out originally, like bang bang play. The guy's almost out at second. Instead, he's safe, and then a little bloop into right field brings him home. And the Pirates do not score a second run. I, I think that was the perfect encapsulation for me of the season up to this point, though. Um, most fr- it wasn't their worst loss of the season whatsoever, but it was the most frustrating loss because of the way that it happened. You get that start from Steens, you don't have the offense to support the pitching staff, and that's kind of been the story of the season. So I felt like it was just like a good summary of what the season has been for us. And uh, you know, we got a lot of questions about the trade deadline and stuff, but uh, yeah, they go four and two, so it's hard to be too upset. But man, it feels like they should have been five and one in the last six. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every time we we 
have Paul Skeen start. We're going to talk about it at length on this show, whether it be good or bad. And this one was both. Skeen's, again, was absolutely phenomenal, goes eight in the third inning, and he just has, so happens to let up that run in the ninth inning to lose the game. But at the same time, it's hard to really blame Skeen's at all. You can't. It's the offense. Like, what? where are we looking at with the Pirates? Like, what, what do we think their record could be at this point, if in if in some of these games where their pitchers are pitching very good or even excellent starts, but they get some support from the offense. I feel like we've had that too many times this season where they're dropping games because they can't seem to score at all. And even when they do score, they just go ahead and give it up again. Um but well they're they're twentieth in runs scored. They are eleventh in runs allowed. So, I mean, that just goes to show you, like, if they were, and I know that there's not a huge difference in between that, but you really feel like th- that big difference is probably that third to fourth run, right? Like, if they were storing four runs every game, it doesn't seem like a whole heck of a lot. I bet you they're at, like, 55 wins if they are storing if they stored four runs every at least. Like, I think that yeah. this is a team right now in the wild card, in one of those wild card spots, if they just scored four runs every single game. I understand they're averaging over more than four runs per game, but that's because of the outlier games too. I'm just saying if they scored literally four runs in every single game, I wonder what their record would be. I don't want to figure that out right now. But I was very I was very curious as well <laughs> because I feel like something the pirates do a ton is leave guys on base. And they're actually top ten in left on base per game. Wow. And they're they're averaging wait. F- you're saying top is a good thing? No, top no? ten, like bottom ten. They're bottom top 10, ten worst. Okay. You so gotcha. yeah, right. yeah, bottom ten. I'm based off the ranking I'm looking at. They're I, top ten. Get, but yeah, okay. yeah, you, yeah, you get it. So they're bottom ten in the league when it comes to left on base per game, and at fourteen point six runners on base left on base. That's mm-hmm. an astonishing number. I thought I didn't think it was going to be that high, but I do notice it throughout the game. Where I look, I even looked at this Paul Skeens game, and going into the eighth inning, they had seven guys or eight guys left on base up to that point, and the Cardinals had one. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's just amazing to me how the little offense they're continuing to get, and we have not seen a move yet. And I know we're probably going to see one this week because uh, imminently the trade deadline is coming. And mm-hmm. by the time we talk next week, it's going to be here. But, yeah. man, you feel like wh- what was Ben Sherrington missing? What was he seeing where he thought being patient was the right move? Because I don't think anything I've seen over the past, really just the entire season, but really the past like month and a half, two months, has shown me that they are right to be hesitant. And I, I because half their lineup is batting 200 or lower, especially over the past two months. And your outfield, you only have one quality bat out there on any given day. I, I, I just don't understand the hesitancy. And the defense is terrible the, out there. So, yeah. Yeah. And, but, and, and that's the thing. I, I saw people like bringing up defense when it come to, comes to like a guy like Brent Rooker. I don't mm-hmm. care if his defense is bad. He can hit. If, you, if, if you're going to say, give me bad defense and bad hitting or give me bad defense, but the guy can hit, hit at least I'm going to have somebody with a bat in the lineup to make up for it. You're not even getting yeah. that right now outside of Brian Reynolds. So, what what is the hesitancy for from Ben Sherrington? That's what something I will never understand as to why you just sit around and wait forever. And I understand that it takes two to tango and maybe the right deal is not there, but I just feel like you you had the opportunity to improve this team for so long and you knew the problems of it. It's been glaring since May, but you just haven't been able to do anything I mean, with it. To me, you say since May, to be honest, like free agency, right? Like, I mean, yeah. if, if you just approach free agency differently, that's why, like, maybe the right deal isn't out there that we, we would all be satisfied with to be had at the deadline where it's like we acquire a player that we believe is, is certainly an upgrade for this team and also didn't give up a prospect we would have really liked to kept uh, in the system. Like, that, that will be opinion by opinion based, different per person. But they wouldn't have had to have given up prospects whatsoever for anybody that they signed in free agency. And they went about it the way that they did. So like that, that's the thing where, where, you know, I know I've mentioned this several times, but not only do the pirates not really spend when they do spend, look how they do it. Like 
this off season to me, just, I, I know that, you know, Chapman's been okay. I understand Rowdy's bounced back, but still so many dollars that they didn't need to spend or they spent unwisely were thrown around where these things could have been used in a different way. And we're not even having this conversation right now about, you know, where these areas, we would probably still be talking about the team wanting to be buyers in areas where they could certainly upgrade, but not these like glaring black holes, multiple spots across the board, two of the three outfield spots. Um, and, you know, who knows what they want to do at catcher. You get four different guys that are all probably MLB backups right now. Uh, and, and obviously Henry Davis, you hope is more than that, but you know, who, who knows what that situation is like. And T Brian Hayes, obviously like you got the, the glove there. You mentioned, Brent, he's, he, he's the opposite of Brent Rooker. Yeah. He's all glove, no bat right now. So, you know, if you already have that in the lineup, why not just have the inverse? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm with you in that um, I feel like something could have and should have been done differently along the way in how we got here. Um, but, you know, as long as, I'm not going to say as long as, because I don't know what that move is going to look like. I expect them to do something. Uh, as long as by the end, after the trade deadline, we see, you know, two of somewhere across the board, whether it's an outfielder and I don't know, maybe they do bring in like a platoon because Connor Joe has not been getting a lot of bats lately. Maybe they are looking at guys that can maybe play first base and hit from the right side as well to platoon with Rowdy. I don't know. But as long as the, we get past trade line and that happens, I, I, they're buying into this team at the very least a little bit. So. We'll see if that happens. They got about a week to do it. Um, I mentioned we got some questions. I guess we can kind of just get into them now because a lot of them are related to uh, the trade deadline. Ricky said, who would you want the Pirates to acquire and which prospects are you willing to deal to get them? I think the second part is the interesting part. You know, we could sit here and say the, the same names that we've thrown out there, right? Um, I will say a, a name that uh, I feel like is... I don't know if it's the most like it seems like it's the most likely now just because it seems like everybody's talking about it is jazz Chisholm. And I know mm -hmm. that we've brought it up on here, but probably not to the length that it seems like everybody's everybody else has. Like, it seems like like they're talking about him. They Jim Bowden on, on 93, seven today talking about it. Uh, we knew that the pirates and Marlins have had exploratory. That was the word thrown out there. Talk on a trade. Um, but it seems like it's been a bit more than that. And it goes back a few weeks. Um, this is interesting to me. Uh, I'm not like, you know, I don't try to mainly I only have Steelers info and it's very few and far between. And I always try to preface by saying that, but I did reach out to somebody just to like kind of get an idea on this uh, and ask like, you know, what are we talking about here? Um, they, they told me the only name that they, Bubba Chandler would not be involved in this trade and probably any trade that the pirates make because of who it seems like is on their radar. So even in a Brent Rooker situation, sounds like they wouldn't deal him. Uh, so to put people's minds hopefully at ease about that. As far as a jazz trade, I, I mean, it seems like it might not just be him. People have mentioned the idea of a reunion with Josh Bell, and that could be, I don't know if they'd flip him, what the plan would be for him, because Rowdy has picked it up. Uh, I know Josh can also hit from the right side, but I don't know. I mean, between the season he's had and what Connor Joe's given you, I might just rather have Connor Joe, to be honest, uh, especially because of the, the defense that, josh bell does not bring to the table um but it seems like people were saying they would take him on as a way to lower the prospects being sent back the other way you take on josh bell's contract the marlin like take it off the hook for the marlins mm -hmm. and the marlins don't get as good of a return for that so um i don't know i've really come around to the idea of jazz uh more than most because of the defense uh, especially like he can play center field. I think he's what this team needs. You talk about uh, they have right now, Brian Reynolds, for as good as he's been at the plate, he's dead last in defensive run saves in left field. Sawinski near the bottom in terms of center fielders. Michael A. Taylor, you're not playing enough because he can't hit. So I'm not, I'm not saying he should play more, but he's not playing enough for the, where the defense makes like matters. Um, so jazz, the ground that he could cover, I think he can make up for a lot of defensive deficiencies. So I'd say not only do I feel like he's the most likely at this point, he's probably the guy that I want the most just because I feel like he upgrades the offense uh, at least to a degree. And he brings exactly what they need defensively. Yeah. I, I also did see Paul Heyman predicted that that's the moves the pirates would make as well. Yeah, along with bell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And looking at their contracts that they currently have, if people want the pirates to spend, 
they would be happy to take on Josh Bell's contract if that's the only thing they're looking at because uh, mm-hmm. at according to the payroll it hits at 16 and a half million for this year. Next year he's a free agent, so he he's a quote unquote rental, I guess if you want to call him that, but I don't really think they're renting him to play that much, especially because Rowdy's doing well of late at first base. If you mm-hmm. put him at DH, then you're taking at bats away from McCutcheon. And do you really want to be doing that? I, I don't think so. Um, Cause Kutch is really one of the only more reliable bats that you have in your lineup. And you're not going to put him in the outfield. I, <laughs> so I, I, yeah. I just, I, I don't think that Josh Bell really means much to the team unless you do see like righty lefty situations where they do platoon them differently. Jazz Chisholm, though, he's a guy that you would have multiple years of control with. You'd have the rest of this season, and you have two more arbitration years on him. So mm-hmm. I think that that's something that is more interesting to me out of those two. Um, not just because they're going to be, he's going to be the one that's going to be playing more, but just I, I like guys, and we've talked about this. I like guys that you're going to have years of control over. That's why, as much as I would love, and don't get me wrong, I would love it just to see it a like Vlad Guerrero Jr. trade as mm. impossible as that may seem for some people. Yeah. I wouldn't love that it's just a straight up rental and I wouldn't love what you're going to have to pick up to get a rental because we know that the Pirates are not going to be paying him in the off season. And so people like that, I'm just not as interested in. That's why I like I I brought up Brent Rooker so many times on this show. He is someone that I'm interested in because he has 3 years of arbitration after this year. So he's got three more years of control, and if you do have to give up more in terms of a trade value, that's at least easier to swallow when you do have those years of control left. And so if this is the trade that actually happens, they get Jazz Chisholm Jr. and Josh Bell, I'm not going to feel bad about the trade necessarily. I I, I might feel a little underwhelmed because I think there's different names that they could go out and get. Um like I know Jose Abreu is the one that everybody is, or not Jose Abreu, um, the White Sox. Release Robert. Or release Robert. I don't know why Jose Abreu came to my mind. Yeah, Robert is White the one Sox. that everybody. Yeah, every Robert is the one that everybody wants to get. Um, I understand that that's probably going to cost more than like Jazz Chisholm would, even with Josh Bell on or uh, without Josh Bell on there as a guy to make the trade less. Um, and then Brent Rooker is probably going to cost a lot just because of his bat, even with his defensive like deficiencies. Um, but his teammate, I still think, would be more interesting to me than a trade with like Jazz Tibbs and Josh Bell combined. With like if you got JJ Bleday, I, I don't know. I think there's several options that the Pirates have out there for a trade. Um, and this one, I would be fine with. I just think I would probably feel maybe a little underwhelmed if that's the only thing they do. Um, it does. Yeah, John Heyman, who we've talked about quite a couple times because of these, actually said that he feels like it's more likely than not that Luis Robert just remains a White Sox. Um, they certainly don't have to trade him. That would be a move to not. Uh, maybe I, I maybe they feel I like said because Paul of, Heyman. By the way, oh, I didn't even notice. To be honest, I I one hundred percent said Paul Heyman. Unlike Paul Heyman, John, not always the most wise. So not the the wise men that we acknowledge um but anyway yeah maybe because the offensive numbers haven't been great this year they feel like they'd be selling low on him i don't know but i feel like in the right situation get some more line of protection around him he could really be a game changer what's going on everybody smitty from around the 412 and i just want to take a quick second to give a shout out to our folks at game changers their logo on the screen right now right above my microphone uh over two thousand different designs in their catalog luxury heavyweight material i'm wearing one of their shirts right now best vintage t-shirts in the game head over to gamechanger.la or pick6.la to pick up some shirts and guess what use code at412 save yourself ten dollars on your order every single time again gamechanger.la or pick6.la best vintage t-shirts in the game check them out jazz chisholm josh bell lane thomas and brent rooker where the names mentioned uh linked to the pirates by John Heyman on his appearance on 93.7. Any of those guys, I mean, maybe outside of Bell, I'm not sure that he necessarily improves this offense. Like, I don't know where he would 
fit in. Um, but the other three would certainly be improvements, obviously, to various mm -hmm. degrees. As far as the prospects, I'm willing to give up because it was the other part of this question. Um, I, I feel like it's got to be a pitcher somewhere in there. I mean, for the Pirates' top five prospects right now are pitchers. You see the pitching that they have at the MLB level. Like Something's got to give. All these guys can't be in the rotation all at the same time. That's the depth of the organization. That's where they're going to have to deal from. Um, I mean, it's Braxton Ashcraft. If they're looking for a guy that's closer to the majors, I mean, I, I like Braxton, but he's what probably their sixth starter next season. Like he's already right there, probably major league ready. Uh, if you can get a major league bat with him being the headliner of the deal, I, I mean, I'm certainly willing to part with him. Um, I, I I don't have anybody that is untouchable. It's just like I mentioned a couple weeks ago. I feel like for me to be willing to trade Bubba Chandler, like that player is not necessarily available, or, or we don't know who that player is right now. Like it's not the the headliner of the MLB trade. Like Brent Rooker, probably the best bat on the market. I don't know that that's something I'm I want to do uh, even. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. I could probably. I could probably talk myself into it, but the, like, there's not many deals out there where I think that he needs to be included anyway, is my point. Tamar Johnson, I mean, I I like him. I, I think that he's a little bit behind. It seems like last few weeks, month or so, seems like he started to come on, but that hit tool, like he's got to be able to hit. Um, I don't know that he's going to field at a very high degree. I don't expect him to play short at all. I think his home is that base. Um, he's not like somebody that I'm super attached to either if the right deal is there. And then you get into the guys that I feel like I'm certainly willing to trade. I actually like Thomas Harrington quite a bit. I might be more willing to trade uh, Braxton Ashcraft, who I mentioned before, before him, even though Ashcraft, the higher rated player and probably closer to the majors. Um, if you're looking for another bat a little bit further down, I don't know, maybe Mitch Jeb, you know, just a draft pick for them last year. Currently the number six prospect can do a little bit of everything. Uh, really unconventional swing. Um, but he makes it work. So even going a little bit further down, man, like they got so much pitching, like their 11th prospect, Xander Meath down here, Hunter Barco, who just got promoted to double A. I mean, there's, they, they have the prospects to, to make a lot of different deals for the players that are on the market. Again, I, there's not like that big name headliner, in my opinion, that they got to throw the farm to get. Yeah. I, when I'm looking at the prospects, I agree with you on Bubba Chandler. Um, like there's technically no one, and we touched on this last week too. There's technically no one that in our eyes is untouchable, but based off of what's out there, I would list, unless you're getting like a home run trade, I would say the untouchables for what the pirates have been reportedly interested in are Bubba Chandler and probably Tamar Johnson to me. And then you look at everybody else. If, I, if I, at I, least Robert was going to get traded, would you be willing to include either of them for him? I mean, I definitely would Johnson. I don't know about Chandler. I would with I Johnson. I don't, I, you'd have to talk me into Chandler. You'd have to really talk me into like Luis Robert turning it around and, and selling me that pitch that he's going to be an all star for the Pirates. But yeah. uh, but mean, th th are they even seriously connected to Luis Robert? Like, do no, we and, and again, like, I don't, I don't know that he's getting moved at all. Like, I mean, I, right. that's why I was curious because I was like, I haven't heard his name lately. So I just did a quick search. And yeah. yeah, it's been pretty quiet. Like I said, the Dodgers were interested, but like, it doesn't sound like the White Sox are all that interested in moving him right now. So, yeah. So, with the names the that are out there right now connected to the Pirates, mm -hmm. I would draw my line after the top two. And then you can make your pickings from anywhere between three and 30 as far as their top 30 prospects. Yeah. Um, Maybe I, just, I, I don't think it, another I, guy. I yeah. I don't think it's, it's worth overpaying to get underwhelming value in a trade. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I don't know unless there's like names I'm not thinking of like Brett Rucker probably is the best bat available right now. Right. I mean, it, maybe Randy on Rose teams Rainer that are selling. Right. Yeah. I, I think that, he bat alone yes i don't know if i could say he's the best player but he's definitely the best right. bat yeah 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 yeah. that's why i preface by saying bat like what you do with him at that point i mean if you have a clear hole at dh it's easy to figure out what you're doing with brent rooker like he's just mm -hmm. your dh but with the pirates again i don't know that like mccutcheon's been fine he leads the team in walks is like the third highest on base percentage or second highest on base percentage um and he sees a lot of pitches. So like him as the leadoff guy playing as the DH has been fine for this team. 
but like I don't know that he's having also the type of season where I'm like he needs to block if, like uh if you have the opportunity to get Brett Rooker, I think he'd do it. Like I, I don't know as much I as I agree that with that. Him. If you want to play yeah. Brett Rooker at DH, but that's why I said what like we were talking about Josh Bell. I don't know that I'm replacing McCutcheon with Josh Bell as DH. No, 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 no. But McCutcheon's Brent Rooker Brent Rooker, I would I would consider replacing Kutch in the everyday lineup with DH. But also I'm willing to take on the bad defense if that means his bad is in the lineup. Because I mean, hey, with the, you with were the to pitching staff, how often is he going to see a ball anyway? <laughs> it's, that's true. If you were to get Rooker and Chisholm, Chisholm would just be playing basically the entire outfield by himself. Because yeah, Reynolds isn't very good defensively left either. The fine. arm is fine, but yeah. Yeah, and for a, a baseball field like PNC Park, where you play half your games and you basically have to have two center fielders. <sighs> Yeah. playing left and center yeah mm -hmm. it's not great but i i honestly if he if they got brent rooker and they stuck him in right field every single day i would not care because he's batting 290 plus i i, I don't it, disagree it's just, because it's, it's just funny why would i why would i take marginally better defense from someone who's not hitting their weight that's currently in the lineup yeah Oh no, yeah, somebody that's currently in the lineup, no. But in terms of if you're looking for exterior options, do you look for somebody that also provides the defense? Yeah, I'm not talking I'm I'm not comparing him to like other trade pieces. I'm just comparing yeah. him to who's currently on the Pirates lineup mm -hmm. now and I would take him over pretty much everybody outside of Reynolds that's an outfielder. Also, Vlad is arbitration eligible next year as well and then he's a UFA. Does that change your mind at all or no? Not even for the one year. It's not a different no, because I think where. Vlad is where you get into the scenario where you're giving up a guy like Bubba Chandler. Yeah. Like G yeah. Guerrero, he's definitely the pedigree where you're giving up a number one prospect. Yeah. Um, I think this is interesting. Jeff said, could Henry Davis be a trade chip with Joey Bart, Jason DeLay, and then Andy coming back? Where does Henry fit? Probably too early to give up on a first overall pick. But if the price is right, could the Pirates deal him away? Yeah, what about him as a headliner in a deal? Like, do the Pirates view him as somebody that they could deal as well? I I, I don't know that they would want to give up on him this early necessarily. His name's been thrown around in those Miami talks as well. Uh, Miami certainly needs a, a catcher of the future. Um, if the Pirates feel like they have, you know, their tandem going forward with, with Endy and Joey Bard, if they feel like they found something there, the home for Henry Davis might not have been a catcher anyway. Like if he, if everybody comes back healthy next year, uh, they might've been trying to transition him to like first base anyway. So I don't know. I wouldn't completely roll it out. I would say it's, it's unlikely. I think that again, you will see in whatever deal that they make, I expect it to be headlined and primarily include from their prospect or from their pitching pool, as opposed to, you know, a, a hitter like Henry Davis, a guy that's already touched the majors. Um, I don't know what his value is right now. Like, would he even be the headliner of a deal with where he's at? Well, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is probably, yeah, yeah, I feel like you're probably selling him at his lowest right now. So I don't know. Unless there's a team that's like super interesting, like, yeah, like one for one or something, Jazz Chisholm for Henry Davis. I mean, I feel like at that point, you're like, okay, yeah, like we can go forward with, with Andy and Joey Bart. Yeah, I, I understand that Henry Davis is struggling right now and people aren't very high on him, but are you going to give up this early on a number one prospect? And if you do, did, why? Did Nick Gonzalez this year not teach us to have some patience with him? Yeah, that's a very good point. And if, if you do move on from him, what kind of value are you expecting to get back? You were quite literally, you said it, selling him at his lowest point. I don't think that mm -hmm. it would be worth it to be able to to move on from him just because he's not producing and not sticking in the MLB. I think that you need to give it some time and hopefully he could turn around. Like I don't want to see Henry Davis up here the rest of the year. I think that they can figure it out with the catchers that they have currently on their roster and mm -hmm. just let him play down in AAA. And next year, and they're really not even next year, next offseason, you really got to tell him to figure it out with the bat. And if Endy's going to be your long-term catcher, maybe you, you transition Henry Davis' full-time role to the outfield, maybe, if he's not going to play catcher anymore. But I just I don't outfield think it would first be... base? Dude, we're going to extend Rowdy. Just kidding. Um... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even if they did, like, 
they'd be looking for a platoon guy for him, right? I mean, so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like first I, base. I, is I just more I think it'd be enough. foolish just to sell low because he's not producing right now. Because and and Nick Gonzalez is a very good point. How low was all all of Pirates fandom on Nick Gonzalez after last season? This off season, how low were we on Nick Gonzalez? Like we were we were questioning whether he was a bust as a draft pick or not. And look at what he's been doing this year. So I'm not saying he's going to turn around and do that, but give it time. He's he's still young. He still doesn't have a lot of service time at the MLB. So I think that they they need to kind of pump the brakes on trading Henry Davis, especially because I don't think he'd be the headliner in a trade. I think he'd basically just be giving him away at that point because I don't even know. Do, does Miami do Henry Davis for Jazz Chisholm one for one? No, 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 no. Uh, absolutely yeah. not. I don't think so. That's why I was saying like if for some reason that were the case, I think you'd do it. And I, I don't know that I would like I wouldn't say that's necessarily giving up on him. I think that's just too good of a deal to pass up for the Pirates right. with the catching options they would still have without Henry. So, yeah, I mean, I don't see it happening, though. Um, I don't view that necessarily as realistic. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, if Henry is going to turn it around, I am curious to see what that looks like for him. Like, this is a case-by-case -case basis. I mentioned the Nick Gonzalez thing, but that was just really to show, like, it's not, like, linear progression. Um, you know, he's not Nick Gonzalez. Is he going to be able to make the same adjustments that Nick Gonzalez did? Uh, TBD. But you know, either way, he's either going to or he's not going to make the cut. Smitty from around the 412 here. And while I may not have much hair, the hair that I do have will not be cut by anybody besides Keek at Keek's Barbershop. My friend Christian Circle, been with us since day one. Keek's Barbershop located 401 Burkitch Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Download the app The Cut. Book an appointment with Christian today, or you can do walk-in with Tony or Ashley. But again, Teach Barbershop, 401 Burkage Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Go check them out. Old school vibe in there. Absolutely love it. Cannot recommend them enough. Wouldn't go anywhere else. Maybe I'll see you there. John says, would Jazz and Rooker be the two most realistic, or I'm sorry, be the two realistic acquisitions at the deadline? Like, if they got both? I mean, is that the question? It's always just, I mean, individually, I think Jazz is is in that area. I guess Rucker could. I mean, man, if, if they're being thrown in there, Jim Bowden, John Heyman talking about it being possible, then maybe it is. I just look at what that price tag is going to be. The other teams that seem to be in the mix on Rucker with the Yankees, the Phillies, and I just don't see them. You know, I mean, they have the prospect pool to do it. I guess. Um, but it's just hard for me to envision that probably is the world where you got to part with, with, with Bubba, but I don't know. I mean, based off what I was told, it doesn't sound like the pirates are interested in doing so. So I don't know that I necessarily view that one as realistic jazz. I think is like, we got another question. I'll just tie this in right now. Cause Doug says, what are each of your final pirates trade deadline predictions? My final prediction is that Rooker's price will be too high for them. They'll get outbid by another team, but they'll acquire Chisholm fam and some sort of bullpen arm. See, that is certainly a path that I could see. You got Chism, center field, years of control. Tommy Pham helps out in right field as well for this year. He's a rental. Uh, and then would be gone. I don't think he would cost a whole heck of a lot. The bullpen, bullpen arm is interesting. Like, I don't know that I view that one necessarily as like necessary, but you know, certainly can kick the tires on the market and see what's out there. I, I think the most realistic actually are the ones Doug just listed. I think if I had to list mm -hmm. three realistic uh, trades, trade options for the Pirates this year. It's Jazz Chisholm, it's Tommy Pham, and it's Lane Thomas of the Nationals. We haven't talked about the Nationals guys a whole lot, no. but like they're going to be sellers too. Lane Thomas certainly in in that mix. Jesse Winker in that mix, who's had a really nice year. Um, so you know, there's, there might be a guy from there we're talking about too. But those would be the three that I think Pirates fans should have on their radar as we approach the trade deadline. I agree with all that. Um, I. I think that Brent Rooker, as much as I brought him up and as much as I like it, I just don't think the Pirates are willing to pay the price tag. And we've, that's something that we've said. We've so called him that, the best bat available. Are the Pirates yeah. going to land the best bat available with the trade deadline? I mean, th the only way that they do that is if they oversell, if, if if they or overpay. Excuse me, they overpay with their prospects. I think they'd be able to do that. But again, with a team like the Pirates, where you are that small market team. I understand we talk about all the time that you got to be willing to move on from these prospects, and we've, we have both vocally said that. 
But are you willing to do that as that small market team, knowing what you're up against if it doesn't work out? I I think that there's an argument of give and take there. Like you have to be willing to take risks, but at the same time, you're you're not the same as the Yankees. You're not the same as the Phillies. You're not the same as the Dodgers. You you can't you you can take calculated risks. You can't just throw everything out the door. And while I I would love them trading for Brent Rooker because of his bat and what it would do to this lineup, I don't mm-hmm. think that if you get in a bidding war with someone like. New York or Philadelphia that that is something that the Pirates should get themselves into. I don't I don't think that they should be in a type of bidding war with teams like that because they have the luxury of not worrying about what their future looks like as much and the Pirates don't. Would you rather do a deal where like Bubba's the headline for Brent Rooker where Bubba's the headliner but maybe you're only giving up like you know one more top 30 and then like another lottery ticket or would you rather do a deal with like tomorrow's literally anybody else not named Bubba Chandler but you're also including like multiple other top 30s in the same deal um because I view Bubba Chandler as a tier above everybody else like even tomorrow I would say probably the second option I'd rather give up a couple more top 30s than having to give away Bubba Chandler in a, in a Brent Rooker trade. Because I, I feel like whenever I look at the Pirates prospect poll, it's Bubba Chandler, then I think there's a gap, and then it's Tamar Johnson, then I think there's another smaller gap, and then it's like the next like three or four guys. Yeah, like, like some of the guys at the bottom here, like of the top 30, other than like Charles McAdoo, he's been crushing it. What, what a story that is to... Um, crazy the way that he's advancing through the minors this year he's the number 29 probably i mean he's going to continue to rise there obviously but basically for me at least after like i don't know shailene polanco i that's where it kind of drops off for me jace bowen's had a pretty nice year too and he's a first base outfield prospect i know patrick riley who's a right-hand pitcher has had some nice starts too but like hunter bark who's the number 12 guy after him i would say that there's quite a bit of a drop off in terms of the way that i view these guys as prospects generally speaking so i think i'm with you i think i'd be more willing to include more more uh quantity as opposed to the quality at the top yeah i just i just think that's a smarter move for what i was saying like i while while that kind of goes a little bit against what I was saying, where you don't want to give up a ton of your future, Bubba Chandler is a bigger piece of your future, in my opinion, than some of these other top 30 prospects combined. If you if you Bubba's, add up the, the, He's knocking on the doorstep of AAA right now. I mean, you could probably see him at some point in 25. Yeah, that's that's what so. I mean. Like if you if you're entering the window of contention, and we all think that based off of the standings and everything and looking at the rotation, they're entering another window of, of contention that they could have for the postseason, like they did from 13 to 15. If you're doing that and Bubba Chandler can also be a part of that rotation. I mean, talking about having Mitch Keller, Jared Jones, Paul Skeens, add Bubba Chandler into that. Like that's your top four potentially in 2025, 2026. Like that is very, that's, that's dang good. In, in, that's a formidable lineup or a formidable rotation. That's also a playoff rotation. When you cut the rotation shorter in the playoffs, imagine that being your stack that you roll out with. I mean, that is very, very yeah. good and probably better than we've ever seen the Pirates have. Luis Ortiz keeps pitching like this. I mean, yeah, they might only need to score two runs a game to win them. I mean, we'll take like more than four. two. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't say that. They might think I'm serious and at least score two. Um, yeah, good conversation. Uh, really enjoyed this. We appreciate the questions uh, a lot regarding the trade deadline. Obviously, when we come back here next week to talk about it, uh, we'll see how different, if at all, the Pirates look. Maybe we're talking about Jazz Chisholm being a Pirate or Tommy Pham or you know Brent Rooker, potentially, if we, uh, we want to shoot for the stars this trade deadline. Tyler, anything else? Uh, no, as we mentioned in the beginning of the show, go check out the top link in the description, Rocket Around the 412. Um, we gave a big intro in the beginning, so I'll keep this one short, but just it's our Christmas fundraiser helping to raise uh, money to be able to provide Christmas for kids around the 724-412 local Pittsburgh area codes. Um, we've been able to do it for dozens of kids over the last six years. This is year oh, seven. Oh, yeah, I looked at the number, by the way. 96 kids 
And then there was the pediatric center the first year. So who knows how many kids were involved with that? But right. Been 96 kids after that first year. I mean, it's it's been amazing, and we're going to continue to push it more and try to mention that more in the beginning of the shows now that we uh, have it out there. It started on July 1st, over $600 already for the mission, but we want to keep that going. Um, we set the goal at $10,000 every year. Last year, we raised over $6,600, which is awesome. Um, but even if you don't, you, you can't donate, just please share the mission. And again, that is at the top of the, the description on YouTube and over on listening platforms where you find the podcast. There we go. Yep. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Thanks to everybody that's donated already. It's awesome to see uh, the, the amount that's been donated already. And obviously we appreciate that and gives us a nice head start on getting the mission rolling. Uh, also in the description is the link for our merch from everything custom designs as well as her individual page i'm wearing one of the designs right now actually um but go check that out our friend Haley wagner small business everything custom designs i'll just let myself tell you about her need a custom t-shirt hoodie tumbler stop what you're doing don't go anywhere else check out the link in the description everything custom designs our friend Haley wagner small business she can do all that for you she even does around the 412 merch t-shirts hoodies long sleeve tees bunch of different stuff i even got a tumblr from her as well so go check out the link in the description goes directly to her facebook page all of her stuff can be found there again everything custom designs he lou agner she does great work can't recommend her enough go check it out so very excited about that be sure to check that out she also does hats this hat is not from her um but she's doing hats now as well so i'll get some from her and be rocking them on here man i didn't even like this wasn't even necessarily planned but i'm all around the 412 out on this episode wearing the hat from uh from josh uh that he did for us as well which by the way sold out i ordered 15 of these things because i didn't know uh like how people are going to feel about them i'm gonna have to order more so if you want an around the 412 hat let me know we got this the circular design um and then like the og logo where it says around the 412 and then the three rivers is just like off to the side of the text um those two are actually the ones that people have been talking about a lot more which is why i wore this one specifically just so people could see that this one actually does look pretty solid uh, when being worn so if you would be interested in get grabbing one be sure to, to message us we'll get you in on the second order I, we sold out of the first 15 and i got seven people for sure on that second order so let me know if you want one very excited about how they turned out uh but i think that's it be sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell if you are watching here on the youtube hit us in the comments with your thoughts on anything that we talked about question for a future episode all that good stuff. If you're listening somewhere else, Apple, Spotify, wherever your podcast from, be sure to leave us a five star review and subscribe over there. Follow us on everything at around the 412 X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We just did an Instagram exclusive giveaway. You never know when one of those is going to pop up specifically for one form of social media. So make sure you're following us on everything. Other than that, for Smitty, for Tyler, this has been the Around the 412 Pirate Show. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.